How's it going guys? Today I want to go over another leak code question. Today our question is from Facebook and it's called Binary Tree Right Side. Alright guys, today our question is from Facebook. It's called Binary Tree Right Side View and our problem description says, given a binary tree, imagine yourself standing on the right side of it. Return the values of the nodes you can see ordered from top to bottom. Okay, so imagine we're looking at some tree like this, and then we flip it, right? So it's going to go from something like this to now like this. And we're looking at only the right side of that tree, and we need to see which of those values we can actually see from the right side of this tree. Okay, and we want to return those values from top to bottom. So if we're given some input that looks like this, and this represents our tree, we would output 1, 3, and 4. So let's look at the visual representation of our tree, which looks like this. And so the reason for that is imagine that we were standing here. We would be looking at this tree head on, okay? And the only things that we'd actually be able to see are the one, the three, and the four. And that's why those are the three values that we return as a list, one, three, and four. And again, to kind of explain why, if we look at this two, right, we can't actually see this two because it's obstructed by this three. And similarly, we can't actually see this five because it's obstructed by this four. So. There's one hint in this problem, and that's the first thing I want to cover. A lot of people have been asking about what are hints or chips or tricks or things that you look for in a problem, Kevin, to decide, you know, how do you know what approach to use or what algorithm or what data structure, and so this is a good problem to cover for that. So this problem explicitly tells us from top to bottom we need to process these elements. So if you ever hear a phrase like that, that's a really, really good indication that you probably need to use BFS or breadth first search. So that's the first thing that we're going to hold on to we probably need a breadth for search to solve this problem. Now, let's start looking for the pattern, right? What is the pattern that we notice? We actually notice here that it's always end up being the rightmost thing on any of these different levels, right? So we can only see the one because it's the rightmost thing in the first level. We can only see the three because it's the rightmost thing in the second level. We only see the four because it's the rightmost thing in the third level. And if we expand that logic, right, if this five had maybe a right subchild or a left subchild, doesn't matter, it would be the only thing on the fourth level, and therefore we would add it to our visible values. So that's really all this boils down to, guys. We're going to do a BFS, and we're just going to construct or create our BFS in such a way that we're going to always add the last thing in our current level to our visible values list. So let's start get started on doing that. So the first thing we need is a return list, right? So we'll say list of integers. And again, this represents our visible value, so it probably makes sense to call it visible value. So we'll say visible values equals new array list. And then as a quick sanity check, we'll just see if we even have a tree, right? If our root isn't all, we don't have a tree, we have no values to process, we could return early. So if our root is null, then we have no trees, we have no visible values, so we'll just return our visible values, which will actually be empty to begin with. Great. So now if we get to line 16, that means that we have a tree to process. We need to do a BFS, so we need to create a queue. So we're going to say queue, oops, queue, and this is going to hold tree node values. We're going to say queue equals new linked list. And so now if we get, again, if we're getting to line 17, we definitely have a tree. So we need to add our root or the top of the tree to our queue. So we're going to say queue.add root. Now what we need to do is we need to make sure that we process the entire tree, every single value, right? So what we could do is we could say, while we haven't processed all the values, we have some work to do. And we can basically translate that into code by saying, while our queue is not empty, we have some processing to do. So we'll say, while our queue is not empty, that means that we have something to process. So now let's figure out how many things we have to process. Well, that just depends on the queue size. So we'll say int size equals q dot size. Great, so now we know how many things are in the current level. Now we just need to iterate through all of them. So we'll say four int i equals zero, while i is less than size, i plus plus. And now we're gonna successfully iterate through all these values. So what do we actually have to do to obtain those values? Well, we need to remove them from the queue, right? So let's get the current value that we're on. So we could say tree node current equals q dot remove. And now we have a value to process. So now this is the important part, right? So we need to check, is this the last thing on our current level? And a really easy way to do that is we know how many things are in this level. So if this is the last thing in our loop, right? 
then that means that this is the last element on our current level. So we could just say if i is equal to size minus 1 because it's zero based, then we need to add whatever the current node's value is to our list of visible values. So we could say visible values.add current.val. Great. So now we've actually successfully obtained what we're looking for in this problem. Now we just need to continue our, you know, traditional BFS logic, which would be, do we have other things to process, right? So in the roots case, now we need to check, does it have children that we need to process? So we could just say if, not root, but current, right? Because that's the current thing we're on. So current.left is not equal to no. So if the current node we're on, let's assume it's the root in this case, if it's left subchild is not no, then we have a left subtree to process. So we need to add it to our queue for the next iteration. So we'll say q.add current.left. And now the exact same thing is going to hold, but for the right side, right? So if the right child's not no, then we need to also add it to the queue. So if current.right is not equal to no, then we'll say q.add current.right. And that's really as simple as that, guys. So now when this entire loop breaks, we will have actually successfully processed the entire tree. So if that's a little bit hard to visualize, let's think about it. If we get to line 17, we have a queue. And on line 18, we're adding that root. Sorry, if we get to line 17, we have a tree. And if we get to line 18, we've added it right to our queue. So now we have a queue with our root in it. So now we're going to say, what's the queue size? Well, it's 1. So now let's go through all the things in 1, right, 0 to 1. So this is our current level. The root only has one thing at the top level. And now we're going to get the current thing. It will be the last thing in this level, so we're going to add its value to visible values. And then we check its left and right, or I guess for you guys, the left and the right subtree. And we will successfully add both of those to our queue, right? So we're going to add those both to the queue. So now the next time this loop runs, we're actually going to iterate through both of those. And then it's going to check each of its respective left and right children and continue the same process. So once this loop terminates, we actually have all our visible values. So we'll just say return visible values. And now to talk quickly about our runtime, let's think about this, right? So we're going to go through the entire tree without fail, right? So that really means that we're going through O of n elements, right? We could just say this is O of n runtime, where n is just the number of nodes that we have in our tree. And then let's think about the worst case for our space complexity, right? The worst case is if we actually added all of those different nodes into our list, which would be O of n memory, right? So if we actually had a list that had the root had a right child, that right child had another right child, and it was just a giant linked list, right? It's technically a tree we would end up adding all those values because we could see it from the right side of the tree. So the space complexity would also be O of n. And again, n is just the number of nodes in our tree. So let's submit this code and make sure that it works. Awesome, and it does. So guys, that's how to solve binary tree right side view in Java. Again, it's a question that's being asked by Facebook. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, be sure to leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you guys next time. Diamonds on me, ice cream. Oh, that's light. My Draco bitch is flat. Diamonds on me, bikes.